We're using basic tools and trash to make realistic miniature knives. I'm using this thin yet sturdy metal I got from a can of peanuts. I'm drawing a reference line that's one and a quarter inches long, which is the equivalent of 15 inches and 112 scale. I sketched out the shape of a knife I found on Google and didn't bother measuring any of the rest of the dimensions. I'm not sure what the function is, but some butcher knives have a hole, so I'm drawing a little indent with my Dollar Tree ball stylus and drilling a hole using my pin vise. I'm drilling into a piece of foam to protect my desk. I used a teeny tiny drill bit, but the hole is too small, so now I'm making a larger hole with a bigger bit. This metal is sturdy enough to create a nice clean hole, but not so hard that it's difficult to drill. You don't want to use your favorite pair, but you can cut the knife out easily using scissors. I cut out the rest of the knife leaving excess so I can refine the shape once it's no longer attached to the lid. This cut blunt edge doesn't look very realistic, so I'm using a cheap flat file to create a slight bevel. This gives the illusion of a nice sharp cutting edge, but this is still very dull. The particular metal I'm using never got sharp and dangerous, but make sure your metal is reacting the same way so you don't cut yourself. I want my knives to look like they have wooden handles, but at such a small scale, I can easily get away with using some cereal box. I completely forgot to do this on all the rest of the knives I made, so it probably wasn't necessary, but I scratched the metal to add some tooth before applying some super glue. It's a bit slippery at first, so make sure you hold your cereal box onto the liquid super glue in the right position as it dries. Now I have this thin piece of metal with a handle that is two sandwiched pieces of cereal box. Since the cereal box is a paper product, I can make it very hard and stiff using some super glue. To fake the look of rivets, I used my X-Acto knife to drill a tiny hole in the cereal box and filled each of the holes with a silver caviar bead that's meant for decorating your fingernails. The caviar bead is round and sticking up above the surface of the handle, so I'm filing it down to make it flush. The rivets turned out pretty underwhelming, but I do like the metal edge around the handle, which is very realistic to what you see on a real knife. All of that sanding dulled the finish, so I'm adding some shine with diamond glaze, but you could use Mod Podge or some other type of sealer. My rivets are hardly visible, and I love the realistic luster of rub and buff, so I applied a couple dots with a toothpick to save the situation. Since I measured the first knife and it's nice and in scale, I'm eyeballing the rest of the knives. I cut out this classic knife shape, and I'm adding a smaller handle to this one. Having a different variety of knife shapes and handle shapes will make this little collection more interesting. Even at 112 scale, the handle can be pretty tiny, so I glued the pieces on with some overhang. I'm using some scissors to refine the shape after the glue dried. I'm stiffening the handle with some more super glue, and please take note this only works with liquid super glue, not gel super glue. I'm using every last bit of the super glue left in this tube by cutting it at the bottom and squeezing out the remnants. I allowed the super glue to completely dry, which was pretty quick, and now I'm using a cheap round file to create the look of finger holds. The super glue combined with the cereal box is really strong and holds up well to the file. Don't forget to bevel the edge of the blade, which looks a lot more realistic. For extra tiny rivets, I'm using a very skinny bamboo toothpick I dipped in some silver leaf rub and buff. This next knife has two parallel sides with a rounded top. I'm changing up the look of the blade by beveling the edge and adding some lines and indents. I believe this type of pattern is to keep cheese and other items from sticking to your knife. I've looked at it too long, so I can't tell if this is a good detail, but I think I like it so far. Since I'm opting for the look of a wooden handle, I'm keeping all of my cereal box its plain brown color without adding any color. You can play around by creating the look of plastic handles by painting prior to adding your rivets. For this tiny paring knife, I chose the ridged portion of the cardboard to create a slightly round handle. When you cut thin strips of metal, it has a tendency to want to curve, but it's very easy to flatten out by bending in the opposite direction. I both copied and made up this next knife shape by creating a tiny bit of a butcher knife with a small hole. I believe a knife shape like this would be meant for smashing garlic cloves and chopping them up. I'm digging into my inexpensive mechanics dish to make this next item. This is where I keep bits of wires and pins I've cut the heads off of. To create the look of a round handle, I started by tacking down a piece of brown paper to the wire using some super glue and wrapping it around to start getting the shape. I coiled the paper tightly and completely saturated it with super glue once it was all wrapped. The end flap of the piece of paper didn't want to stick down until the glue became slightly tackier. I squished that bit of paper down using a rubber clip. 
I'm using a triangular file from the same cheap set of files I got at Harbor Freight to start making some ridges around the round handle. The easiest way to get this started is to keep your piece flat on the table and move the file back and forth over it. Once I have a little indent starting point, I can continue going all the way around. I added three indents and to make sure they're equally spaced, I started with the ones at the top and bottom and finished with one in the middle. The indents I created with the triangular file have some hard edges, so I'm softening those with a small round file. The easiest way I found to do this was to roll it through my fingers as I run the file back and forth. Right now it looks a bit like an elder wand, so I'll be impressed if anyone understands what I'm making. I'm using tin snips to give it a trim. I'm using a file to create texture on the surface to make this look like a knife sharpener. The handles of knife sharpeners are often red for some reason, so I'm grabbing my red enamel paint to add color to the handle. I'm applying this oil paint with a toothpick so I don't have to clean a brush. You could achieve the same shiny finish using a couple of layers of nail polish or acrylic paint with a sealer over top. If you'd like to see how I made the serrated knife, check out this video next, and consider joining my Patreon either as a paying member for $3 a month or as a free member. 